Hey everyone, let's build a contingency table and stat column chart to evaluate two categorical variables in Excel. So first things first, you're probably going to want to pause the video here to open up the promotion data set in Excel. Now that you've done that, we're going to dig into this data set. So say an online retailer recently sent emails to customers that included a promotional discount. The retailer wonders whether there is any relationship between the customer's location in the United States and whether or not the customer made the purchase with that discount. So we're going to look at two variables. The first variable is going to be purchase and that'll tell us if a customer made a purchase with the discount code expressed either as a yes they did use the discount code or no they did not use the discount code. Our other variable is going to be location which tells us whether the customer lives in one of four different regions in the United States. The West, Northeast, Midwest, or South. So the first thing we're going to do is, well, we need to put a pivot table here. To do that, you want to go to the Insert tab in Excel. And then right under File, you can drop in a pivot table. Sometimes it's also helpful to take a look at some of the recommended pivot tables, just in case you're not really sure how you want to illustrate or demonstrate your data. So that can be fun. And here are just a few examples of some of the things that it suggests. None of them are exactly what we're looking for in this scenario, but you never know when one of these could be helpful or give you some inspiration. So I'm going to hit cancel and we're just going to build our own pivot table. So first we want to select the table or range of data we want to use. Excel is smart. It knows that I want to use the data from the promotion tab and cells A1 through C601. So that's already there. You want to make sure that that is correct and accurate, especially if there may be some breaks in the data you want to use in your pivot table. So then you can choose whether you want the pivot table to be in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. In this case, I want to keep it in this worksheet. So I'm going to click existing worksheet. And then for location, I'm going to make sure the location bar is active and choose where I want it to be. And we'll say E3 sounds good to me. With that done, I'm going to hit OK. And now I can start putting things together in my pivot table. Uh, we have different filters we can use. We define what is going to be represented by our columns and rows. And then we can also have some of the different numerical variables or counts of our categorical variables rather we can manipulate them by summing them averaging them there's all kinds of different things that we can do with pivot table so in my columns i want to know if somebody made a purchase so i'm going to click purchase and i'm going to drag it right down here to columns it's just that simple. So now we see in our column labels, we have no and yes showing up there in row four. And then for our rows, we want to look at the location. So the four different regions of the United States. So I'm going to click on location and I'm going to drag that right on down to rows. So here we now have our table sort of set up. We have our columns, our, our regions, and our rows are uh, whether or not a purchase was made. And now we want to find out how many emails landed into each one of these eight categories. To do that, we'll click email. We're going to drag it down to values. These numbers look huge. And that's probably not what we're looking for if we're just trying to figure out how many people in the Midwest made a purchase with the discount code and without the discount code. And the reason why the numbers look so absolutely insane is because it has summed each and every one of the values in the email column together. So instead of counting email one and email two as just being an individual email, it has added one plus two plus three plus four, and it's done that by each of these categories. So we want to change this and we can go to value field settings. So we click the down arrow at sum of email, value field settings, 
And here we can see how we can summarize this value field. And what we really want is the count. We just want to know how many emails fall into each of these eight categories. So I'm going to click OK. And now we see that says count of email. And now my contingency table makes a lot more sense that we have 600 observations total in our data set and the sum of 190 and 410 is equal to 600 as is the sum of 184 plus 143 plus 154 plus 119. So this makes sense. And now if we want to we can go ahead and we can make a chart with this. And to do that, we can do insert, and then we want to insert a column or bar chart. And there's a number of different approaches we can take. In our case, we want to do a stacked column chart. So I went to insert, and then I found the bar chart icon, and then I found the stacked bar chart uh, symbol uh, under 2D column. And here we see that we have whether or not a purchase was made and divided, and we also have it divided into Midwest, North, East, South, or West. So we have four columns, and each one of those columns indicates how many emails had their discount code used in a purchase versus those that did not. So this stacked column chart tells us the exact same information we get from this contingency table. And we can do some things. We can add data labels here so we can see how many emails fall into each one of the categories. We can add access titles, title the chart. There's all kinds of fun things you can do. So now you've built a contingency table and a stacked column chart with two categorical variables in Excel.